resolution field. So having said that, I think there are four basic areas in which uh, e-government can use online dispute resolution technology and skills. Supplying information to the public, which is a conflict prevention exercise in my mind. Prompting and receiving citizen input. Enabling service delivery to citizens. And then facilitating the right of redress or access to justice. I'll talk about each one of these very briefly. Supplying information to me is a key important function for ODR and e-governments because making information available is the bedrock to giving information that prevents disputes and allows disputants to reasonably resolve disputes that they have. A couple of quick examples. If you look at the focus the President-elect uh, President -elect Obama's transition team is taking, they're asking questions about information transparency, open government, public participation practices, and transacting with the public, all of which are online dispute resolution issues, but which I think also touch very closely on many of the internet governance issues that you're dealing with at this conference. Um, the second quick example is in my agency, the National Mediation Board, has established something called the Knowledge Store. This is a publicly available database that allows our customers, our citizens, to have access to information going back to 1934 and which they use as the base for preparation for grievance mediation and online arbitration and we've made this information available to facilitate this dispute resolution function. Citizen input, encouraging and obtaining citizen input, is I think almost a universally accepted function of, of government. I see a direct link there between uh, gathering citizen input and dispute resolution. A couple of quick examples. Uh, in the United States, there's a thing called regneg, which is a shorthand way of saying negotiated rulemaking. And uh, an example of that would be the US organic, USDA, Department of Agriculture, organic standards, which established the uh, standards for labeling produce in the United States as being organic. It was one of the first times, in my memory anyway, that uh, the online means were used to gather citizen input. And the USDA was swamped with input. They got over a million public uh, entries into their email log, which in one way was a problem because they didn't know how to handle it at the time. But it's an illustration to me that if you use online tools to gather citizen input, you'll get a lot. And the standard that they created actually still exists and is uh, even though it's never going to be accepted by everybody, is a very robust standard because of the amount of input they were able to receive. Service delivery and online dispute resolution tools, I think, are, are go hand in hand. The example that I would use is one that I worked with for the last year or two, and that is the U.S. Army Medical Command's online ombudsman program. They have both live and online ombuds portals, and they've been able to use this as a way to get information from people who are patients, who are doctors, who are staff, who are public, about problems that are out there and get them early so that they can be resolved quickly and before they turn into very difficult problems. And they're using this, uh, using live bodies to do this, but they're also using an internet portal that has the ability for anonymous input, which is something you can't do uh, live and face to face. And it's allowing them to get a lot of information very early on, and they've been able to proactively approach resolving conflict, that, and in some cases, keeping the conflict from occurring in the first place. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about right of redress and access to justice. Uh, this, it seems to me, is again almost a universally accepted function of, of government. Right of redress and access to justice, uh, if you want to look a little bit on the internet yourselves, look at the Texas State Bar online access uh, uh, functions, uh, very robust uh, making available of information to people who will be in the justice system. Then you have, uh, in Massachusetts, we have a, a proposal for a small claims court process, a, a project that would allow citizens easy access into the small claims court, which is a, a venue in which many people don't go because they either A, can't afford an attorney, or B, feel that the cost of getting the attorney and pursuing the dispute is going to be more than they would gain from winning the, the, the argument about the dispute. Uh, if you can use internet tools to make access to that system easier and cheaper, it seems to me that you're opening up justice to a far greater number of people. So we find that a very important project. Um, 
then finally there is the rule of law project from the ABA, which uh, Jeff Oresti can talk about. He's one of the panel members, and uh, it's a very direct application of the notion of right of redress and access to justice internationally using internet tools. In the United States, I'll say just a couple of things about the Obama campaign technology commitments, which I think are significant for internet governance. Um, he's said that he's going to appoint the first U.S. chief technology officer, which I think is a very exciting proposition, and which will very likely lead to some uh, uh, reasonably intelligent discussions about the role of technology and the role of the internet in government. And as the quote there on the screen says, he wants to use technology to reform government, improve the exchange of information between federal government and its citizens. And uh, also, a stated goal is to protect the openness of the internet. These are all things that I think internet governance and e-government uh, have in common. I'll just wrap up by saying that what seems to be, to me, significant changes in the way the U.S. government is going to use e-government suggests to me that there is some relationship between ODR, e-government, and, e -go and internet governance. It's clear to me that the explosion of ODR technology is forcing the entire dispute resolution field to consider how to apply the basic standards of practice that they have in traditional dispute resolution and conflict resolution to an online context. It's equally clear to me that there's a connection between the standards of practice and governance of the internet being discussed at this conference. Um, for example, you know, I've looked at some of the topics of the panels, multilingual citizen bases, human rights issues, disability access, privacy rights, governance for gatekeepers, etc. All of those uh, seem to me to have a direct link to standards of practice, not only for those wishing to govern the internet, but for those who are using uh, electronic means in the internet for e-government. And certainly there, there is a challenge there for ODR practitioners to figure out a way to take these three overlapping fields e-government, online dispute resolution, and internet governance, and coordinate those functions so that we have a well-governed online environment that can be used for e-government. And as we know, as our practitioner colleagues at ICANN can attest, ODR technology is being used now as a tool in dispute resolution where the disputes arise in discussions about how to govern the Internet. So this is not an alien field for any of us. And I would simply suggest that even though on the face of it, it would not appear that online dispute resolution would be at the center of Internet governance, I think if you look a little below the surface at some of the functions we wish to use the Internet for, and even some of the disputes that might arise as we discuss internet governance are directly related to online dispute resolution and that our practice as online dispute resolvers can be an integral part of internet governance. And so I thank you for your time. Uh, I hope my remarks have uh, given us something to talk about a little further on the panel and I look forward to your feedback. Thank you, Daniel. And, and Pawan, um, what if we give out some quick comments? You have to be really quick. Sure. Uh, well, I have made uh, two, three slides. So can we have the uh, this thing? Can we? Uh... Yeah. Okay. Coming there? Is it control four? F? Uh, F5. F5, sorry. Control F5. So it's been demonstrated amply this morning, and it happens in my presentation as well. Well, broadly speaking, we've heard about different perspectives that have happened this morning uh, with different speakers, but uh, something that's come across very loudly is that online dispute resolution today is an integral part of an overall national strategy for providing uh, effective justice to the citizens. 
I have a presentation, but I'm actually going to uh, lick it away. Bottom line is very clear. I'm, uh, I've, he I've heard this morning as a discussant about uh, various people talking about different issues. But uh, I am personally thinking that uh, online dispute resolution is taking its manifestation in various forms. It's in the form of online mediation. It's in the form of online arbitration as also e-justice. These are three foundation pillars on which uh, this ODR actually takes place. I think when you took a look at the concept of e-courts, the concept of e-court is just an extension of the concept of uh, ODR. Developing countries, however, have still to utilize the concept of uh, electronic courts in a manner so that can effectively render uh, effective e-justice to their concerned populations. When you look at across the world, we've got Singapore that's got an e-court, works very well. There were plans within India to come up with e-courts at the Supreme Court level. That plan, however, never materialized. So this also shows how bureaucratic decisions often impact the real implementation of uh, ODR mechanisms as a means of reaching out real justice to the populations. The focus in the developing countries, I believe, has to be more on e-educating the judiciary and creating the e-judiciary by providing the judiciary with various tools such as online tools, online access, online databases. It's not just that you expect, you know, you push a button and online uh, the dispute resolution happens overnight. You need to give an appropriate enabling environment in that regard. However, by and large, when you look at developing countries across the world, you're finding that countries are stopping short of providing the real effective ODR mechanisms to their populations. However, it's important that you just don't only provide your ODR mechanisms. It's essential that your laws must provide the enabling legal infrastructure so as to further uh, not only give a legal standing, a foundation, and a validity to such ODR mechanisms, but also have the effectiveness of the uh, decisions coming out of such ODR mechanisms to be effectively upheld in courts of law. So therefore, issues like electronic authentication of online dispute resolution is a crucial stuff because one of the major challenges of ODR is that the opposite party if will invariably find that hold on it's, if this has gone against me sorry I don't I don't agree with this because there are potential chances of manipulation of tampering of data and whatnot uh, in India there have been efforts that have been going on towards uh, providing online mediation we have the Indian technology mediation and arbitration center that's located in Delhi that has been providing online mediation to its various clients and it provides various uh, services pertaining to online mediation uh, and arbitration for technology related disputes. I have a chit in my hand which says I need to finish quickly and so I will but bottom line is in uh, the uh, Indian Technology Mediation and Arbitration Center we have basically be, been trying to focus at all technology related disputes and have been utilizing technology as a means for effectively uh, rendering dispute resolution mechanisms. I think broadly speaking what has emerged in these sessions is uh, from the various uh, panelists that the ODR can help restore the confidence and the trust in the people of the developing countries in their legal machines, their legal machineries and processes of law. Internet as also new technologies today provide a real opportunity for countries to leapfrog to the latest stage of ODR development by leveraging technology and not in, uh, reinventing them. Finally, a misconception is in the minds of people that ODR should be resisted because it will totally replace the existing judicial systems of countries in the courts. That's a mere misconception. ODR will never take on and completely replace the judiciaries of the country. It will only supplement the judiciary and judicial systems of the countries, including um, the developing countries, only to help the governments provide faster access to justice and disposal of cases. So both of these have to coexist, and in coexistence, it's essential that adequate resources must be allocated by the relevant governments towards making ODR a better and a more bigger reality. In conclusion, 
All I can say is this panel discussion has once again brought, to the, brought forward the basic fact that developing countries need ODRs not only as a means for delivering and rendering effective justice to their populace, but also as a means of further making their judicial systems far more efficient and effective and restoring the confidence of the people and the community, the society at large, on the ability of traditional judicial systems to render effective justice to the concerned persons. With that, I close my remarks. Thanks, Anand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming to our workshop, and we are very grateful that you're still here. Uh, we had planned for two purposes for this workshop. One is that to do a little outreach for online dispute resolution, uh, to provide the information and uh, present development for this uh, new issue. Uh, the second purpose is to form a dynamic coalition for ODR on the platform of IGF. Uh, this was the original plan, but after the workshop, now I really doubt the possibility and the feasibility of online dispute resolution. And think about here, we can't even organize an online workshop <laughs> to, tr to bring our two speakers who are kindly waiting for two hours on the internet in different time zones. How can we organize the, the, the public, the, the hearing, cross-examination, e-discovery, all the difficult uh, dispute resolution process through the internet? It's not reliable at all. It's a big problem. <laughs> if the technology is really the fourth party of ODR, then this is a very unpredictable, uh, uncertain <laughs> a party. Uh, so I really doubt the future of ODR. <laughs> okay. I, I just want to come in. It's not that internet is not reliable. I think uh, people are professionally not trained still to handle this thing. This is the issue I have been telling. Oh, okay. That there is, uh, there is internet and you know, things are happening. But as you said, uh, probably what you call us, you tell the organizers to you know, do some rehearsals beginning and then you know, it comes in. That's, that's what I'm still optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I guess uh, we uh, would like to have a comment on this. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think we have to be as uh, pessimistic as that, because <laughs> overall, um, it is natural that the technology will only improve once we use it. So it's going to have its, it's going to have its bugs. Uh, we have been using technology here, which was okay, which is built for personal chats, um, uh, in uh, uh, you know for fam for friends and family, and uh, of course these features are not quite compatible with um, what we were doing here, but. Uh, if you start with technology, it is going to um, it is going to improve. I would just draw uh, like to draw our attention to the fact that we have an upcoming requirement for online dispute resolution, um, where we better get ready, namely in the context of the ICANN introduction of new top level domains, yeah. where there is not just disputes uh, that are related to brands, but there are actually more complicated things to resolve, yeah. such as um, uh, rights and and um, and uh, uh, plans or uh, even policies of entire communities, um, uh, even communities that may be divided into different representative institutions um, um, or um, split, split communities. Um, uh, and of course, the, the relationship between brands and uh, IP uh, and communities is not always um, uh, uh, so easy. So all these talents are going to be needed, and of course to find them is not going to be easy unless there is um, uh, uh, online um, resolution. And typically, if th things like video or <coughs> audio don't work so easily, written procedure is generally um, uh, fairly reliable, and that should work online. So um, uh, it, it, it would be good if um, uh, just for that upcoming avalanche of potential um, uh, uh, cases, we um, had a forward-looking attitude and tried to um, uh, 
interact with ICANN that is responsible to, to handle this and make sure that we have a transparent mechanism. I uh, would like to draw your attention to the fact that the current proposals made by ICANN um, with respect to um, uh, dispute resolutions are, um, uh, have been viewed by some people and are, um, seem to be extremely weak. Why are they weak? Because they're trying to make, to force a decision through on very, um, like a military court and summary grounds. And uh, that is, of course, very dangerous. And, uh, and even the the, uh, me the mechanisms for dispute resolutions in part have been re replaced by a simple scoring system. So instead of applying expert knowledge and intelligence or anything, we just have a scoring system. You get 12 points uh, or 11, and that's okay. If you get 10 points, that's not okay. And then all these people are sent to an auction process. This is, of course, not the right way to go. So online. Um, dispute resolution is the solution there, and uh, um, we would have to count on the you know, experts who are in, in, in this room to be available and, of course, you know, interact right now at this stage with the, the proposals that are being made and also um, resolutely propose that um, the online resolution and the publication of the, um, uh, of the uh, 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 arguments be made. The advantage in the case of new GTLEs is that there's no real problem of confidentiality. All the stuff can be published. That should be, make things much easier. Oh, thank you very much, Farah. Uh, and thanks for raising this important issue. Uh, we've been talking about the caveats of uh, ODR and potential technical difficulty. Uh, yes, I do basically agree with you. We should look forward and uh, not, be, not be too pessimistic. Uh, but we, we can see some um, um, negative feedback on ODR. When we talk about ODR and ICANN, uh, this, the only thing we can think about is UDRP. Actually, there's a great potential for ICANN to adopt ODR to resolve uh, other disputes. Uh, for, for example, the new GTLD application disputes. But it seems that, as you said, they outsource the dispute resolution services to some uh, traditional uh, dispute resolution providers, such as ICC. Um, uh, and, and there is no uh, actually online proceeding has been established. So, so there are some disputes that's really suitable to be resolved online, but they are not. Th th this is quite unfortunate. But few ICANN people here, I guess it's a very technical issue. Any other question? I, if, oh, yes, please. Well, I want to talk from the technical perspective. Oh, great. So I am from uh, IIIT Hyderabad, I'm visiting faculty from Athens University of Economics and Business. Eliana Cafez is my name. So I want to just mention three small issues very fast. First thing is that online dispute resolution allow us using new technologies like grid computing and distributed computing to have in our fingerprints big legal databases. So the moment the dispute arises online at that time we can find similar cases and use them as evidence to the disputing parties. So this is very important I believe. The second thing that is very important also, I believe, is that uh, we can move ODR into a commodity part. That now it's not. For example, here in Hyderabad, actually, we are doing some research. And what we are doing is that we are taking electronic contract and doing data mining in the contract. And we uh, take the clauses that have to do with ODR. And then automatically, we try to create a workflow on how to solve this, uh, this dispute. So actually, we are, we are trying to use electronic contracting and use ODR in order to avoid going to the courts. Of course, we need, of course, a lot of legal aspects and legal help in the sense that we don't know when we have termination of the contract because we are computer scientists. So actually, we definitely need legal background and it seems that the, to these two communities, although they can really work together very efficiently, it seems that there's a gap there. Computer scientists are doing what they think is ODR. Legal people are talking in, in theory and from legal perspective what is ODR. And business people really need a solution to avoid the courts because they are very expensive and they want to do cross-national e-business transactions. And we don't provide them the tools in the end of the day that this can be happen and it can be happen. 
So that is a small comment, if you would well, like. Uh, oh, well, sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. This is exactly what we've been researching. Uh, we see uh, two great potentials for the R. Uh, one aspect is for uh, e-commerce, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises. At the present economic situation, uh, this is the winter of world economy, and they are seeking overseas market, and they will be overseas disputes. So, of course, all the R's great potential on this. Another perspective is for social justice. For those people who are really d difficult to go to the courtroom, to go to the arbitration commission, uh, the, the, the dis disabled people, they can hear or speak or, or watch. So that, that's something that can help them. Uh, these something we believe is really meaningful so for facilitating both economic development and social justice. So Jeff, you have the final conclusion here. Well, that's exactly uh, right, building on that point, which is, is that the term ODR uh, suffers from the use of the term dispute resolution uh, being part of its name. What we're really talking about here is using internet communications technologies to facilitate the creation of rights. Certainly sometimes there may be disputes as uh, those rights are created, uh, but uh, the technology itself can be used to maintain positive relationships, uh, keep the communications going, keep people out of court. Uh, and that's where the real focus is, how do we create economic rights and social justice. Uh, well, thanks, Jeff. And after this workshop, we want immediately convene a, a formation meeting for a dynamic coalition of uh, ODR. If you're still interested, despite the technical difficulty, uh, if you're still interested in the show, you're very welcome to join us. We're going to use the couch on the second floor. Oh, I mean the English way, second floor. So, so that, that's, that's the third floor for Americans. Okay, <laughs> right. Please find us at the couch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What can I do? And you are great. You are saving my life.